Are you unsure whether you need a Kanix IP interface or a Kanix IP router? Well then this video is the perfect solution for you. Because in this video I want to answer exactly this question. And with that, hi and welcome back on my channel to this brand new video. So we'll take a look at the difference of those two devices. Because I noticed that this is a question that is commonly asked under my videos. So therefore let us take a quick look at it. Now let's start with the hardware. Because if we take a look at the hardware, well we basically don't see any difference. Both devices have an RJ45 connector for the Ethernet side. Both devices have a Kanix twisted pair connection. And both devices have some LEDs at the front as well as some buttons. So we can basically summarize that the hardware itself doesn't make a difference. But what's the difference of those two devices is the software. Because the Kanix IP interface only supports Kanix IP tunneling while the Kanix IP router on the other side also supports Kanix IP routing and with that also Kanix IP. But let us start slowly. First of all, we'll take a look at the Kanix IP interface. What is Kanix IP tunneling? Well, it's pretty much what it says. It's a direct connection, so a tunnel between the normal IP side and your twisted pair installation. So what this can be used for is for example as a programming interface. I mean the name already suggests it. So here you can see I'm inside of the EDS6 and if I go up here to my connections you can see that here I'll have a lot of Kanix IP interfaces that I can use. So for example here we have two visualization servers, here the Gira S1 is a remote device and you also see already the routers but I'll come to that back later. So what you can see here with this symbol is a Kanix IP tunneling connection. And if I choose one, so for example the Gira S1, well then what I can do is for example I can start to go ahead and program my devices. So for example here this display or I can also go ahead into the diagnostics and start listening to the bus and see yeah, the communication on the bus. So the Kanix IP interface basically acts like a normal USB interface which I'll connect to my PC to then be able to parameterize my Kanix installation. And another thing that is identical is that if I use this tunnel, which I obviously do at the moment, this tunnel is blocked for other services. However, a Kanix IP interface supports mostly more than just one tunnel connection. It's typically around five tunneling connections one Kanix IP interface supports. So what you can do is then, for example, use one tunneling connection to parameterize your installation, another tunneling connection, for example, for a visualization server and so on and so forth. Because what I didn't tell you until now is that this Kanix IP tunneling connection isn't only used for you to parameterize your Kanix installation, but it's also used for example by devices that don't have a Kanix connection and also don't support Kanix IP. Then those devices can use this tunnel of the Kanix IP tunneling interface to act like as a normal Kanix twisted pair device to directly communicate with the twisted pair installation. Those are for example Home Assistant, IO Broker and many more visualizations, servers, etc. Oh, by the way, if you are more interested into the topic of KNX and for example also KNX and Home Assistant, then maybe consider to check out my video courses over on Udemy. I have linked you those courses down below in the video description. They are already with a coupon code so that you save a little bit of money. In these courses we really start at the beginning. So we start by zero and advance to more complex topics. So for example in the Kanix Home Assistant Primer we start by creating our first entities via the UI, then we go over to YAML and also use then later on Kanix and Home Assistant for automations for the visualization and I'll also show you what you should need to know when you connect Kanix to Home Assistant. So definitely check out those video courses. So if that's what a Kanix IP interface does, why do I even then need a Kanix IP router? Well, that's where the routing comes into play. Because what you can see here in my installation is actually that I have two Kanix twisted pair lines that I'll connect via an IP area. 
And if we take a look inside of this twisted pair line, we can see that in both cases I have a KNX IP router. So the KNX IP router is supposed to transform KNX twisted pair telegrams to KNX IP telegrams. And that's the big difference because the yeah, tunneling connection basically is a one-to-one -one connection between two end devices. So for example, the visualization server and then the IP interface. On the other side, KNX IP basically is communicating to all KNX IP devices at the same time. So what does that mean? Well, basically the following. If one device on the first line wants to send a message to a device on the second line, well then the message is being sent to the KNX twisted pair site. The KNX IP router sees this telegram, knows because of its filter table that was set by the EDS that it needs to transform this telegram to the KNX IP site. Then it sends a KNX IP message onto there, my IP network. And this message is then received by all KNX IP devices on the IP installation. So therefore also by the second KNX IP router, it sees this telegram, transforms it to KNX twisted pair, and then this message is received by the device on the second line. So as you can see, a KNX IP router can be compared more to a line coupler or area coupler, but also with the additional functionality of an interface. So you can also program it. As you can see, normally, KNX IP routers also have tunneling interfaces that you can use for programming. And besides that, you also need a KNX IP router if you have dedicated KNX IP devices. So not devices that need a tunneling connection to act like a normal twisted pair device, but real KNX IP devices. So for example, Weinziel has a actuator that is a dedicated KNX IP device. It sits on the IP area or the, or the IP medium and sends KNX IP telegrams. Also, for example, Home Assistant also supports the KNX IP mode, not only the KNX tunneling mode. And as you can see here, or as we saw in one of my last videos, also Shelly is using the KNX IP integration. While it's not a yeah, certified device, however, it's speaking KNX IP and it can't use a KNX IP tunneling connection, which also yeah, makes sense because you, if you have multiple Shelly devices or multiple KNX IP devices, then remember a KNX IP tunneling interface only has five yeah, tunneling connections at the same time. Well, then this is a little bit of a bottleneck. And so therefore in KNX IP, that's no problem at all because here the communication is being done via multicast. And so there we don't have a limit in this case. So let us summarize what we learned. A KNX IP router supports to connect multiple twisted pair lines via KNX IP. So this is the first use case of a KNX IP router. Besides that, we can also use it to connect other KNX IP devices to it. So for example, IP actuators like the Weinzell device, or for example, also the Shelly uncertified KNX device, then also for example, Home Assistant, etc. And it also has integrated a KNX IP interface inside of it. So with the router, you also get automatically also an interface with multiple tunneling connections that you can use for devices that don't support KNX IP, but need such a tunneling connection or for example, for programming purpose. Then on the other hand, the KNX IP interface, well, we basically already had it, is a programming interface for the EDS or can be used as one. And it can also be used to connect other devices via tunneling to my KNX installation. So for example, Node-RED, Home Assistant, other visualization servers, etc. Multiple connections at the same time are possible. However, each tunnel can only be used by one application at the same time. So that means that KNX IP interfaces typically have more than just one tunneling connection. Also, bear in mind, like in my case, as you saw it, if you already have KNX devices that also have an Ethernet connection, then it might be useful to check out if they also support KNX IP tunneling. As you saw, my visualization servers here did that because most of those devices then also have an interface function yeah, already inside of it and you don't need to buy a separate device. 
Yeah, and so that's the difference between a Canix IP router and a Canix IP interface in a nutshell. So I hope this video was useful for you and I answered this question, what's the difference? If that's the case, then I would be more than happy if you consider a like to this video and maybe also subscribe to the channel to not miss any new videos here. And also don't forget to check out my video courses with the coupon code down below. With that, I would say I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.